Oh, there you go. Hi, Sarah. Yay. Hey. Oh, my goodness. That was a bit yeah. stressful because. Yes. <laughs> I can understand, and I have to keep I have to keep the show show running and the enthusiasm set. But uh, but, anyways, <laughs> thank you very much for 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 joining. I had to this. close all my other apps and everything. Sorry yeah. about that. Glad it worked out. So yeah. thank you very much for for doing this. It's uh, it's been yeah. pleasure trying the fragrances. I remember very well. I was quite starstruck uh, meeting you uh, at Exans. Uh, was like. 10 seconds when I came to you and said, said, I would love to try Jungle Jezebel. And you know, it was, it, that was, that was two, two and a half years ago. And now you are speaking. So thank you very much for, for taking time. Yeah, that was um, such a kind of crazy, busy uh, couple of days for me. Right. Doing I a trade understand. show like that is really intense. You meet so many people, I can um, but it's fun. Yeah, it was really good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And, you know, today is, I was telling every everyone that it's my 50th um, uh, edition of the live. I've been doing yeah. it for a year and a half and I couldn't be happier to, uh, to uh, you know, that, uh, that I have you. So thank you very much again. So. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and it's um, such an honor as well to be your 50th guest. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So, um, I think most of the people who are listening here, I know uh, most of them from names and uh, uh, I've heard only positive things, but maybe for people who don't know you, uh, I actually tried to take some time out to read about you and I gave up because there was just so many things to to Google, so many, <laughs> you know, links really? to read. I was like, I'm just going to ask her and let her describe her her journey, not only into fragrances, but the I mean, you're doing music, you're doing videos, you're doing art. So just maybe, uh, you know, uh, paint a picture for everyone listening. Um, yeah, the background. Um, well, let's just go back to, I'm an artist. <laughs> let's just start there. Um, so, yeah, I, I've always been really interested in storytelling um, in different types of art forms. So I've done a lot of photography work that's like, um, photo uh, sequences that would end up in um, <clears throat> sort of fashion magazines and mm -hmm. um, it would be narrative or um, a film that's narrative and those types of things. So um, <clears throat> so I guess that uh, that led me to the um, world of fragrance really because yeah. of the sort of all-encompassing storytelling sort of immersive capability that it's like the final frontier of um, art in lots yeah. of ways. And there's so much olfactory art now happening um, in, in museums and galleries around the world and theaters are using um, fragrance to uh, partly tell their story. And um, <clears throat> so for me, it kind of started like a film narrative that I was working mm -hmm. on and it was about a CEO of a fashion empire. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's actually based on the true story of Patricia Reggiani and Maurizio Gucci, which is now being made into a film Lady starring Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Which is so and... exciting. I can't wait to see it. Interesting. Yeah. But it's a bit, it's a bit like close to home for me. I knew that Ridley Scott was going to be making that film when I made my 30 minute Wow, film yeah, yeah. as well. So cool. I decided um, <clears throat> there's like a, butch, a book a book out called Gucci. Yeah. And I decided to create a whole sort of fake fashion brand. So I created Rocco okay. Rosso. And I created the monogram and all of the homewares and the furniture and, and the costumes. And you know, there was a cast of characters, there were 12 characters, and, and it was a 30 minute film. And we filmed in this gorgeous a state location like this beautiful house here in the UK that is called Hatfield House. That's like where Tomb Raider is filmed and you know, all these like really big Hollywood productions. So it's quite a beautiful mm -hmm. production. And, um, and it's the story of Patrizia Reggiani. And um, <clears throat> so after that film, um, she, she murders her husband, Maurice. Sorry, okay. Sp spoiler That's alert. For everyone who wanted to see it, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's based on truth. So if you know if you know about the Gucci history, you'll you'll know. I don't, but I'm. Oh, okay. okay. But it's it's amazing. Um, it's okay. an amazing true story, and um, 
And so, but my character kind of then grew into yet like another sort of uh, world where then she decided to create a fragrance as well. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in my um, interpretation, the ghost of Rocco Rosso, who she killed, um, comes back and actually haunts the perfumer who she's working with. So the perfumer okay. creates this really weird fragrance for her. Okay. And um, and it's really kind of like a, it's a comedy theater. And then the scent is disseminated in the, the okay. theatrical, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that was like the beginning of my fragrance journey. You know, that yeah. was like how I kind of got started. Um, mm -hmm working with perfumer Ashley Eden Kessler on Leopard and Greek Keys. Those were like my first two fragrances that I worked on. Um, and she is like the resident perfumer at the Institute for Art and Olfaction based in LA. And um, <clears throat> she's extremely talented. I mean, she teaches all of the Accords classes, which I take because okay. now they're online. Thanks to the pandemic, like all of the accords classes are online, and um, and so yeah, she was like my first point of like education in perfumery back mm -hmm. in like 2015, and um, she's really good because she every kind of facet of the fragrances that she makes are basically accords like she in yeah. like you know she adds something like you know with leather it's an accord with amber it's an accord every with rose and it's, it's an accord mm -hmm. like every single thing that she does yeah. is like broken down into like 12 ingredients in and of yeah. themselves yeah. so um yeah. working with her was really interesting and a really big learning experience yeah i had to i had to google her because you know, I, I was smelling them. Um, so Greek keys really blew me away because I've been I've been uh, into you know these aerozonic cologne like cologne like fragrances. So Greek key was like okay, perfect, it's amazing. And then I smell leopard, and I think in my personal opinion, except General Jezebel, it's probably the most complex fragrance from the line. It's it's so much going on in leopard that. I, I gave up after some time. I was like, every time I was smelling, there was something new. And it, it's mm -hmm. such an exceptional fragrance. I, I find it def definitely quite difficult to wear because of that animalic note. But it's, I think it's really fascinating what I had to mm -hmm. really Google her because I didn't know her name. So I think she's not so, so known, so to say. But like you mentioned, I mean, I think she's teaching. So I guess um, that's where... Um, a lot She's become a lot more well known now because okay. of the classes. So, um, you know, I got a lot of customers that just come through and they're like, just can you just send me Ashley samples? They just want to smell the ones that she's made because they've fallen in love with her as a teacher because she is such a great teacher and she's so eloquent and she's just so sophisticated. I mean, she's an yeah. amazing, amazing person. Yeah. And, um, and so I think, you know, there's she's she's gained a following and yeah it's interesting mm -hmm. she doesn't from i mean i know she does have other clients where she does do certain things i know she does mm -hmm. some can a lot of candle work okay um and yeah. she worked for a while for um i want to say sarah herwitz in la okay. based, based in la she's lovely Oh, so you know, you know her. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was saying her name right. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I know that Ashley's done a lot of work with her. Yeah. And um, she's, she's just a, a really excellent perfumer. She also made Bascule. Yes. So Bascule was one that we started like back in 2016 it was like mm -hmm. when it, when it was like, commissioned. So that was when um, yeah, like it took four years, four years. Yeah. Um, you know, and some, they weren't all that like drawn out. Like uh, I think it was Greek keys. That was mm -hmm. like, she sent me four mods and I, I, I picked one. I was like, this is it. <laughs> Leopard took a lot longer. Leopard is a really particular fragrance and yeah. for instance like we have worked with a few different compounding houses and um 
it took a little while for it yeah. to get to where it is now yeah. because it there it went wrong so <laughs> so many times like it, it's almost just on the edge of being wrong yeah. um one time it came back and it was like i bought kilos of the oil and it came mm -hmm. back and it was like some ingredient had made it smell like really bad body odor and i'm open to all <laughs> i'm open to all kinds of weird stuff but yeah. this was like it was like a really weird like wow what happened what went wrong and it wasn't until it was you know until it got into the hands of carbonell you know chris maurice's c de la niche Yes. That it then, like the between Ashley's formula and the compound of the, this particular, extremely balanced, finely balanced blend. Mm -hmm. I mean, there must be like over a hundred ingredients in in the yeah. formula, yeah. Um, but I think that there's just it, it. There's some things that could make it really go very wrong. Yeah, I mean, there is there is a, a, a something. I think is that animalic. I would not say sweat. But there is an odor smell mm. that makes it also very addictive to me, yeah. right? You, yeah. It makes you want to smell. So I think it's it's very, um, I think it's also proven that humans or people like unpleasant smells, right? There are a lot of studies oh, saying that. And sure. I think this is definitely, let's say, it has that funkiness uh, and that avant-garde nature that, um, that, yeah, that brings a lot of complexity. Yeah, it does. Um, it's a funny one. It's a really funny one. Like I go, I go on and off. I go on and off it personally as well. Um, and then I have some people who are just like so hardcore. And I'm that was my, that was what I chose to wear today actually. Yeah. Um, because and I used to do this a lot. Like I used to always put on leopard before I had to like do something like this. Like talk to people, give a talk or present myself in some way. Yeah. It's um, a bold. Because I felt like it was like fortifying, like it made yes. me feel like empowered and strong. Yes. And it, it does actually. I could imagine that. I could completely yeah. imagine that. But you know, it, that's, that's true actually, you know, it could be a dressed up fragrance, you know, when you have to have close encounters or something like that. I, I think it exudes um, confidence, definitely. Um, but Sarah, definitely. I mean, talking about the whole brand, I have a feeling like, I have a feeling, and I think you would probably agree with that, but that I don't see you following any trends, right? Like if the fragrances are completely avant-garde, but also very easy to wear. It's not super funky in one direction, but also have their originality and, you know, have their charm, so to say. So was that always the idea that you said, okay, I don't want to follow what I was going? And did it also come because of that fictitious kind of uh, your idea of, you know, building up stories and then kind of basing the sense on those, so. Well, I guess it's, I mean, I guess I approach it in the way that I would approach um, my art practice. And I think with my work, I've never been so interested in being pigeonholed, um, which is partly why I probably changed medium quite a lot, you know, I, and maybe partly why it was hard to you know, describe what is my USP, my unique selling point, right. because mm -hmm. I didn't really like to be um, brand branded in that way. Like I, I, w I didn't want to be basically um, pigeonholed. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, with every fragrance that we do, it all, it kind of, it kind of comes around like really organically, you know, um, I mean, the first two were the ones that were like, okay, I'm going to put out a very feminine fragrance, Leopard, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put up a, a very masculine fragrance, Greek Keys. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> that, you know, but that was such a naive idea at the time, you know, yeah. in hindsight, it was such a naive idea at the time because, um, you know, I quickly learned that what is, what is, ma what, how could I possibly, mm -hmm. yeah you know, expect to know what a man or a woman <laughs> want to smell like or anybody who's in between. Like it yeah. is just, not, it's, it's absolutely preposterous yeah. and presumptuous for me to, to say like, this is for a man or a woman. So, um, so it's just like learning 
stumbling along and mm -hmm. um, every fragrance that kind of comes has come in a totally different manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think in terms of like following trends, like, I, yeah. I mean, I don't even really know what's trendy. Okay, but are you not, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, you're based in UK and there are quite, I mean, I could think of seven to eight UK brands that are doing quite well and that are quite famous, but are you like smelling contemporaries, um, other oh, yeah. brands, uh, perfumers? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm really interested in, um, you know, I am a collector myself. Oh, I didn't I, know that. Yeah, of, of course. You know, I mean, um, I I am more and more interested when I do like throw down cash and I do blind buy perfumes as well. I'm really interested in stuff that is like so weird and different. So I kind of have like a little collection of like yes. just things that I like to show people when they visit me that I'm like, oh, but you know, artists who come to visit me who don't know that much about perfume and you know, of course, I have friends from all walks of life. And when they come around, I want to like show them, like, this is what perfume can be, you know, because yeah. I think a lot of people have this, you know, who aren't Perception. engrossed within the wonderful world of perfumery. I think a lot of people have this idea about perfume that is kind of a little outdated. Yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> so for me, it's kind of fun to show people stuff that's outrageous you know yeah that's true yeah talking about outrageous i think from this collection i could completely imagine jungle jezebel being that fragrance that you somehow mm. present to someone when you say hey do you really want to smell something completely niche and this is a fragrance that that uh, that somehow could uh, yeah surprise right it, it has this element of surprise uh the fragrance that's true yeah, it's, it is among those, you know, so that's on my little shelf of like the fucking weird fragrances. <laughs> Jungle Absolutely. Jezebel is on there yeah. because it's the fragrance that really kind of taught, like when I first smelled that I didn't like it, you know, it was the fragrance that taught me a lot about what fragrance can be. Um, I didn't expect that that, I mean, that I could grow to love that. And so at the time, you have to know that, you know, Miguel had not published any fragrances at that time. Okay. So I didn't know that. Okay. No. So actually, when I met with him, I was expecting to show him my up and coming releases and get his feedback okay. about things I was working on. And instead, he pulled out like five things on the table and was like, oh, you want to smell what I've been doing? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And um, he put Jungle Jezebel right on my arm. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, whoa, what is, you know, like, wow, weird. And he had this amazing description for it. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a really different way, again, of like going about, you know, I guess curating fragrances. You know, sometimes they come to me finished, like Jungle Jezebel did. Um, I mean, we did tweak it a bit, actually. Okay. But um what happened with Jungle Jezebel was that a few weeks later, I was still thinking about that fragrance. And mm -hmm. I was like, not in like, yeah. a, ooh, ooh, I'm going to be really smart and I'm going to have this in my line. Nothing like that. It was just like my intuition of my gut, my, like my heart was like, I've got to get that. Like I, my greed, my need to like have this amazing smell again. Mm -hmm. Um, in my nose, you know, like I just needed to have it. So mm -hmm. that's when it became, you know, part of the brand. And um, <clears throat> yeah, that was that was Miguel's first published wow. fragrance. So Next he had not published, but he had been working. He has right. like he had at the time this massive back catalog of things that he was like tinkering with, and he had been working. I think. He was, um, you know, working with already working with uh, Chris Carbonell on yeah. getting materials and getting advice and, um, you know, doing his reviews. So it's just so I find it so fascinating how people can come about perfumery in so many different ways, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Yeah, but also with 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 uh, Miguel, it's the thing, right? Like I I find that this is probably his most complex work, also because I personally find Miguel's work quite difficult to wear, you know, like or at least let's say to put it in an easy way that I find it difficult to find an occasion to 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 wear a fragrance. Or most of them he done didn't he has done for Nishane or or Jungle Jezebel, for example. But I think mm. this is probably the most complex. Uh, one app smelled from him i mean i haven't smelled his own line but it's definitely that banana note was something that i never smelled before in a fragrance uh well it's the kind of thing like i mean i wear i wear a jungle jezebel and i go out and i get a compliment and i'm thinking are they as the person who's complimenting me who doesn't know me very well and doesn't maybe even know i have a brand or that this is mm -hmm. one of mine are are they aware of like how fucking weird this fragrance is? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or, or or is it just is it just like ooh, that's like like you're rocking that scent and it's just yeah. grand, you know? Like it just right. works with 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 your aura and that's with your right. personality and with your outfit that's and right. with everything else. And so I think that there's something about um, we can sit and evaluate fragrances and you know and like judge them by you know after 15 minutes after two hours after all these things but at the end of the day like it just depends on what else is around what atmosphere you're in the mood you're in what you're wearing and like you know i think that you can yeah. if you're going to the office that's a different situation right <laughs> like you're going into like a room where you want to be very conscious of what you're smelling like because you're in close contact with other people and you don't yeah. want them to be you know having to deal with your stink yeah. <laughs> your jungle <laughs> jezebel stink all day long you know? yeah absolutely i mean you know i i i, I live in Ger germany in munich and i have a feeling that people are not so open-minded especially when it comes to animalic sense but sometimes i also have a feeling that this is something you created for yourself in your head right because um, I mean, it does start funky, Jungle Jezebel, but uh, on the skin after 20 minutes, half an hour, it's it's really beautiful. I mean, but I'm always, of course, in one year, two years ago, when you used to go to the office, I was always conscious because it's such a personal thing here, perfumes uh, in Germany. You rarely get compliments because it's something personal. I would not go and say to a colleague, hey, you know, what are you wearing, uh, your fragrance is great. So nevertheless, I think sometimes you also make it up in your head, uh, but definitely something uh, I, I could only recommend everyone trying. Is it is it um, um, a limited edition or was it a limited edition, sir? Um, no? Just the uh, eyelashes bottle. The, the, the bottle, I don't have it. Do you have it uh, for people who who... I don't have it. No, I don't have okay. it here, unfortunately. You should you should check it on on internet. It's it's uh, also a piece of art, I would say, a gaudy, yeah. but also very interesting. It makes you just wanna hold it and spray it on. It's it's, it's definitely um, that kind of fragrance. Is the idea also coming from you uh, of the of the whole how the, the eyelashes and the hair and everything? Yeah, yeah. So that was my um, sort of bottle decor when I was between two um, two styles of, of presentation. So this is yeah. our current presentation. But this one and, is the older one. Uh, no, no, this is just a different collection. So this is, okay. um, th these are the two presentations that we have mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, we've gone through a few different yeah. versions. But um, so it was kind of like, I wanted to release it, but the bottles weren't ready. So okay. I had to get creative, which was what brought on the idea of the eyelashes. Um, well, the, what brought on the idea of the eyelashes was that the uh, title of Jungle Jezebel is a song by Divine, drag queen actor um, who was in John Waters films, who's somebody mm -hmm. who I really was always inspired by. And it, he mm -hmm. teeters on the idea of like, you know, it, they talk about <laughs> talking about trash and talking about um, taste, you know, and good taste or bad taste has always been something I've been really interested okay. as an artist. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I guess you could say that like the, some people might think that it's pretty trashy to put like, to go to my, literally I went to my local, like, you know, beauty 
supply store and got like okay. a bunch of fake eyelashes. And um, <clears throat> so I just thought, you know, how perfect the bottle is like a face. <laughs> obviously yeah. <laughs> how come nobody thought of this before is what i was thinking you know like it's clearly divine and divine was really well known for um her gigantic fake you know drag queen peroxide blonde wigs and yeah. um you know sequins because she performed and yeah. um <clears throat> And the little beauty mark, actually, that was Miguel's idea. The beauty mark was Miguel's idea. That was, okay. and that was the icing on the cake because, because he always, she always wore the, this very classic beauty mark. So okay. yeah, I Is got it on the, the final circles, stuck them on, and that was Jungle Jezebel. That was like the birth of Jungle Jezebel. And I didn't really realize that it would be so shocking to some mm -hmm. people because, like, a mm -hmm. lot of like people were very <laughs> offended and upset by <laughs> the bottle. Um, but, you know, and then in the end, a lot of people really loved it. So, you know, I've got comments like people would like talk to the bottle and comb her hair after a hard day, <laughs> you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, but it's, it's always when you do something different and, uh, you know, you can easily identify that that's one fragrance, it stays in your head. And it's not only the bottle, but also the fragrance, I think so. I think it's always with something different and uh, unique. Um, all right, Sarah. So let me maybe read some comments. Um, um, so I love the fragrances. What else? Uh, Robert says, I'm at work, but I wanted to stop by uh, and show you my love and to Sarah. That's thank you very much, Robert. Uh, okay, I'll take a question. Oh, okay, it's just not a question, but a personal thing. Uh, John says, a personal thanks to Sarah for all the support to me in my early days, uh, just for the loveliness. His scented snowdrops. Uh, I think he's uh, he's also from UK. So probably, uh, you know. Him. That's so uh, nice. Thank you for saying that. That's really sweet. Yeah, it's amazing. So yeah, a lot of, so lately, like people have been wondering, because I have two, the two accounts. I have the House of Sarah, well, yeah. I have actually quite a few accounts, but I have the House of Sarah Baker mm -hmm. and I have the S. Baker collection. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes somebody else is working on the S. Baker collection mm -hmm. account, okay. but I've never let anybody really take control over the House of Sarah Baker. So when I'm making comments on House of Sarah Baker, it is me. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it is actually me. They so, are because um, I'm a too, you know? I, there was a point I was like, okay, is it this one, this one, and then there is Sarah Baker Cakes. So thanks yeah. for clarifying that. And Sarah Baker Cakes is like kind of a portfolio of some artworks that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not very much like it's not a very active account at the moment, but that could change, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Sarah, let's talk about, I'm really curious about also the beginning of, uh, because like you mentioned, you are an artist, but were there certain events or certain memories that somehow shaped your taste in fragrances or were, were the fragrances themselves like you mentioned you are a collector so have you been doing it for a long time maybe your memories from your childhood fragrances your mom and dad wore uh, i don't know oh yeah i mean well my dad wasn't particularly a fragrance enthusiast um uh, but my mom did have quite a few fragrances that she mostly wore when she went out Okay. And, um, you know, Chanel number no. five and like the big, you know, big brands. Um, and my sister, who's a few years older than me, um, was an enthusiast. And um, to be honest, it actually put me off perfumes. So um, <laughs> I had like, I would be in the car with her, you know, we'd, we'd be on our way to swim practice. We were, we okay. did synchronized swimming actually for okay. um, a big part of my childhood and I'd be stuck in the car with her for 30 minutes like mm -hmm. <laughs> choking and like being you know a spoiled car sick yeah. kid mm -hmm. being annoyed at her fragrance so it actually put me off of like okay. fine fr fine fragrance or designer fragrance um mm -hmm. let's say so what I did was I moved to like natural oils so I was mm -hmm. like the person who was looking for the ambers and patchouli oils and um you know white moss from body shop kind of mm -hmm. low-key easygoing <clears throat> that was that was me yeah so that was kind of was my 
upbringing with fragrance. And I think it was, mm -hmm. it really wasn't until um, I realized like as an artist, like the storytelling, all encompassing, you know, potential that fragrance has mm -hmm. in terms of a medium that I started really getting into fragrances. Right, right. But then um, I told you also personally, what really blew me away was uh, uh, Flame, Flame and Fortune. And that was one fragrance. I didn't read the name of the perfume and I tried and it really completely blew me away. And then I read the name and that was you. And I, I wasn't expecting that because in the beginning it was Sarah McCarthy, you know, uh, Miguel. Mm. And then I was like, what, like how, how? you know? So mm. did, did you learn, was it a long process? Or is it more like a, like an experiment where you, you were like self-taught with also with uh, the classes you did with Ashley? Because it's really, if one fragrance I can recommend from the whole collection right now, it's going to be Flame and Fortune. That's definitely, I haven't smelled a fragrance like this, which has somehow fiery white florals, if I had to say it. It's such a, such a beauty on the skin. Did you say fiery white florals? That's what it is to me. It's warm, white yeah. florals. It's, yeah. it's like... I mean, that's what it was intended to be, I have to say. Actually, you mm -hmm. totally hit the nail on the head. Um, when I designed that fragrance, it was when I was working on um, a book with mm -hmm. um, a collaborator um, who has like a, a, a publishing company mm -hmm. um, called Baroness. <laughs> and we ended up making that book which okay. is, I don't know if you saw any yeah, of this of when you were doing the research online. Yes, yes, um, I saw the video as well, yeah. Oh, the videos are so fun. I'm super proud of yes. those. Yes, lovely <laughs> comments, comments below. I read the comments as well. It's really cool. Really oh, appreciate that. Thanks. So yeah, the videos are really special to me because those, um, I kind of took control of those. Whereas like with a lot of the imagery in this book, because it's a Versace book, um, as an artist, I had to really compromise quite a lot, of course, as mm -hmm. you can imagine, like you have, mm -hmm. you're an artist and you have like the most wild, funky ideas. And then you work with a, a, an established brand like Versace, who actually aren't really used to working that experimentally. If you look at like mm -hmm. their yeah, past, yeah, like yeah. Gucci do lots of like really crazy experimental stuff compared to mm -hmm. Versace. Versace is actually quite a conservative brand in the best way possible. And I don't mean that as an insult at all to Versace because they were so amazing to work with and I would you know love to work with them again. But <clears throat> it was just like um, negotiating my crazy wild ideas through the lens of like, of a brand that was treading on delicate waters. Like you can't yeah. do crazy stuff if you're gonna be that high profile. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so that was really interesting. So actually White Inferno was the original title for Flame uh, and Fortune. Would pass very well as well. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it had like, you know, so that was actually a, every single fragrance note was chosen mm -hmm. inspired by the story the original story of white inferno and um <clears throat> it was a wild ride of a narrative so <laughs> by the time it went to by the time it got to versace we had to take out a lot of the crazy stuff i mean there mm -hmm. was just uh an insane amount of stuff so mm -hmm. i ended up um kind of separating those two things the perfume got separated from from the book okay and um and yeah so flame and fortune then sat well it sat as white inferno mm -hmm. for a little while and i didn't do anything with it for like i don't know a year or a year and a half and then um <clears throat> I did, I started working with, uh, I got some compounded from Carbonell, and then I added this orange blossom accord that I created. And then it became a much more voluptuous, joyful fragrance. It was really dry before the okay. orange blossom accord got yeah. added. Now it's creamy. It's really creamy and it fills in the room so fast. You know, I sprayed it from the, from the sample and I, I felt myself in this kind of huge bubble of of, of, you know, uh, of white florals, but, but very juicy, right? It was 
that the tuberose came very juicy and then slight slight incense smoky notes but also a lot of to me it was white and yellow if i could think in colors you know mm-hmm. it was this kind of a warm but also soapy kind of white it's it's i can't d- define it it's difficult to say but i think fiery florals i would say like florals is the best way to um describe it also my favorite from the Thank you so much. So yeah, that was kind of like I really wanted to set the white the white flowers on fire. Yeah. <clears throat> so I added um mandarin petit grain which has this mm-hmm. kind of like um I don't know, that's the, where like I have motor oil listed as one of the fragrance notes. And of course there is no motor oil in the fragrance. <laughs> that was more of like a creative gesture to help mm. the viewer understand more about like the narrative and what's behind it but then also mm. the um that combined with like the ginger and the pink pepper and like i was looking for sort of fiery spicy things mm. to bring to that fragrance that made mm. it feel like something was on fire or like um i think as susie nightingale ex- explained mm. it once was like you can still smell the tire on the road from the getaway car mm-hmm. like it has that kind of like oil slick on a yeah. road type yeah. of type of feeling to uh, it which, and mandarin petit grain has that it naturally mm-hmm. just has that amazing yeah um nuance to it yeah. and i really wanted to kind of accentuate that fieriness mm-hmm. to it yeah i know for people who think you know i don't know tuberose or orange blossom is a is a feminine note this is completely done in a different way right like it's that that warmth that uh, those smoky notes they bring in that masculinity masculinity in there i usually mm-hmm. don't sleep with fragrances but this is one fragrance i thought you know in 3 hours 4 5 hours will be gone and i did sleep with it and i could i could smell it you know uh, in the morning as well and it was yeah it's really special uh, i actually uh, on my birthday Uh, Chris Morris called me. Uh, oh, he, awesome. he, yeah, he, he's like, Raul, how do you like Ludo? I said, I really like it, but Flame and Fortune is definitely my favorite. I told him frankly, I said, hey, I love Symmetry. I love Ludo. Is is that how you pronounce it, Sarah? Yeah, Ludo. Ludo, Ludo right? Like the Ludo. game. Right. So I was like, hey, but Flame and Fortune is definitely my favorite. Uh, don't be offended. He said, hey, it's a great fun. It's also made in the lab. Oh, but uh, but uh, yeah but let's let's okay moving on so again guys but Chris but Chris hasn't smelled i don't know if he's on this live but okay. i really ought to send him a bottle of, of flame and fortune yeah. because um <laughs> what he doesn't know is that i've actually added uh-huh. my okay. i've added to his compost so he's actually okay. he's only smelled like what he Driver. gave me but he's not okay. smelled the finished product and of course i would never do that with anybody else's fragrance Yeah. I I did that cuz it was like it was mine and I knew that I wanted the compound. I knew I wanted that base, but it just yeah. wasn't voluptuous enough. I right. needed like and that's when it became flame and fortune. So mm-hmm. like the the orange blossom accord that I added was like the fortune. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. To it. it made it like, you know, much less of like an art idea, mm-hmm. I guess, and more mm-hmm. of like a damn you smell good you yeah. feel good type of uh mm-hmm. for me yeah fragrance. that definitely no i can if i could recommend one fragrance has to be femin fortune uh dambasara so let's talk about ludo because that's one fragrance uh, i'm biased because i love uh, chris morris's work right so especially when he does a oud so i'm like i'm going in a fragrance thinking about that i'm, I'm going to like it and it's going to be one of his kind of animalic ouds but then i spray uh, ludo on and it's completely multi-layered a different take of take on oud because on one hand side like i mentioned i had a feeling or well, i think that you defy or you don't follow the trend so to say but like there was or there has been a time when a lot of brands bought out oud right so um then i'm putting ludo on and it's um it's that that sweetness that comes in the oud that's completely also uh, took in a different direction and please talk about ludo a little bit because i saw some artwork behind it and i found it quite fascinating the 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 symmetries and the um the game i guess it has does it have something to do with the game so to say 
Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. so Ludo, spelled L-U-D-O, mm -hmm. is where we took the name, and it's mm -hmm. like a it's a board game. I'm sorry, I'm I have a little sore throat, so I have to put a cough drop. So, um, so with Ludo, um, <clears throat> you know, I started. Let, let's just start with symmetry. I started mm -hmm. with symmetry. Right. Um, made by Chris Maurice as well. And that's in this collection. I don't have a bottle with me, but it's in this collection. <clears throat> and I wanted him to make me a fresh cologne like mm -hmm. oud. I love oud. And um, I really fell in love with it. And um, I knew that I wanted to have something like that. I knew I wanted Chris to make it because he's made such amazing oud fragrances and he's such an expert. So um, when he sent <clears throat> Symmetry, we worked on Symmetry and when we came to the, the final realization of it and decided on it, I said, great, this is perfect. It's going in the S. Baker collection, which is our, um, <clears throat> you know, it's this collection. It's got like a much more sort of <clears throat> streamlined mm -hmm. uh design you know it's not it's not like as kind of maybe visually wild uh, and different as our extra day parfum collection mm -hmm. and this collection is all <clears throat> eau, de eau de parfum sorry inspired okay. by eau de cologne but not we didn't want it to be like fleeting you mm -hmm. know we wanted them to last so yeah so they're not you know <clears throat> they're like a, still a, a 15 to 20 percent yeah concentration which is the flame and fortune i mean flame and fortune lasts for lifetime so i, I was thinking <laughs> it was an x-ray frank, frankly speaking so i actually am thinking how how much how long are the x-rays lasting because for me flame and fortune would mm -hmm. latch on to the skin uh, well i think it also does depend i mean it does it's, totally it's, depend on the formulation right. um so, you know, where something could be uh, extra de parfum at a really high concentration and might mm -hmm. not even last for as long as the eau de parfum. Mm -hmm. True. So <clears throat> if you need your fragrances to last so long, maybe get a travel size and bring it with you or bring a bottle with you. Right. Um, but so we decided on the eau, eau de parfum, which was symmetry, and then um, I said to Chris, can you please make one that is that can go into our extra collection? So something mm -hmm. heavier, deeper, <clears throat> something sweeter, something mm -hmm. that isn't um, doesn't have as much of the freshness that Symmetry has. And um, but so it's kind of like the it's kind of like the sister mm -hmm. of Symmetry. They're related to each other for sure. I mean, in yeah. fact the note breakdown coming from those guys were, was mm -hmm. exactly the same as those two fragrances, but they're like, to me, they're completely different fragrances. I mean, Symmetry has this bizarre, like freshness, yet yes. this like deep, exactly. deep woodiness. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ludo doesn't have that freshness as much, you know, like <clears throat> those, those notes are in there. It does have bergamot, um, yeah. but, but then what comes along much more prominently as we did our evaluations and figured out where it sits within the framework of of fragrance mm -hmm. um, is that it started having this like sweet forefront mm -hmm. that really came forward the the ambers and the vanillas and yeah. um so it you know <clears throat> and it has these notes of white chocolate mm -hmm. of black cherry and um, the cypriol is kind of maybe what ties it together yeah. and also what associates it with symmetry as well because they both have cypriol. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I guess Ludo has like more, a lot of oud in it. It has two different yeah. types of oud in it. And one of them is a tincture that Chris made himself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, it was great to work with Chris because he's such uh, an expert at working, at doing commissions and like at wor working with brands and kind of knowing what they want. And because yeah. we have a lot of our perfumes are compounded by him, actually thanks to Miguel, 
-hmm. because before we did Jungle Jezebel, we yeah. weren't working with them. And it was when we ordered Jungle Jezebel that we started mm -hmm. working with Chris. But, yeah. you know, like for instance, all of Sarah McCartney's are compounded by Sarah McCartney. Okay, because she does, she does her, she does the compounding for us for those fragrances. Yeah. Yeah. And then the same with Sherrod, uh, actually. <clears throat> so we get Sherrod compounded directly from Andreas Andres. Wilhelm, mm -hmm. the perfumer of Sherrod. Yeah. yeah, lovely. But, you know, so coming back to um, uh, Ludo and Symmetry, I think we can definitely make a, a strong um, distinction between two. So I think Ludo is for oud connoisseurs who, who like their oud more woody, slightly dense, animalic, maybe slightly. But I think there is symmetry is much more for people who are starting off with oud, right? It has this airy, uh, citrusy uh, note, uh, which is always there, which there are similarities, but in, in terms of power and depth, I think they're completely different. So if you are a starter or if you want, if you have started liking oud, I think symmetry would be one. Uh, and then Ludo would be definitely like a stronger, bigger sister of of, of symmetry. I would prefer Ludo because uh, it completely goes well with my DNA and the fragrances, kind of fragrances I like. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has like. Um, so do you do you find it to be sweet, or what? What is your um, impression on? That. Is that yeah, for me on my skin, it is. It is way creamier. Like I'm, uh, I'm smelling it from here, and on my skin, it's sweeter. It's it's creamier. You know, somehow it's also with my wife and me, for example. Some certain notes, like sandalwood, for example, they're much more sweeter and creamier on my skin than hers. So I think it's also the skin chemistry. So for me, this is why I love Ludo because it is this dusky oud but there is a slight sweetness and creaminess on my skin, which mm -hmm. I don't have with Symmetry. So even though I smell Symmetry first and I liked it, on skin, Ludo completely, uh, you know, took over. So um, yeah, definitely uh, one of the woodiest and um, yeah, my favorite, second favorite, uh, definitely from the brand. So that's really great uh, that you went with, uh, with Chris on this. Um, and yeah, I mean, and what he did was like magic. Like, yeah. I, I was just so impressed with the, the, I didn't actually give him a lot of direction, I have to say. Mm -hmm. He he really kind of seemed to completely comprehend like what it was. And, mm -hmm. you know, he understood the assignment as they say, <laughs> which is, <laughs> yeah, you know, he did. And, um, but honestly, what was so interesting is that um, when, when Carbonell for me, when they generate, you know, mods for me and they send out these printouts, um, I say Carbonell, when I, mean, when I say Carbonell, I mean C de la Niche, which is the, yeah. uh, sort of se separate brand that Chris is, um, working with, uh, kind of in control over that he found it essentially. Yeah. Um, but still using some of the resources from Carbonell, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's like the best mm -hmm. of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and they always print out these notes pyramids mm -hmm. and the note pyramid for symmetry and Ludo was the same, Okay. but they're completely different yeah. fragrances. So that is a testament to like reading notes on, uh, you know, and not really knowing what the fragrance is going to smell like, like, right. you know, so I hear so many people say, oh, I thought I hated tuberos and then. I smelled Sherrod. Well, right. Sherrod is like a hugely tuberose fragrance. Right. <laughs> like there's no denying it. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's just the combination with um, leather, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, or yeah. it's the ylang ylang coming, yes. coming up or something yeah. that, that, that actually changes it. And there's like, a, like yeah. I was saying, like there is a certain magic with the formulation that happens. So, um, it's just all about like balancing, isn't it? And yeah, it's a very sweetness. delicate balancing act that things can be off by a little and just be so wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Sherrod is really beautiful as well. There is the sweetness, but but this floral, it's such a huge bouquet of florals that uh, that it's it's really, it's heavy, you know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I do know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is. It's a it's awful. a heavy fragrance. Like it yeah. is not playing around. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 
yeah, you you know, it's loud. It's definitely yeah. loud. Um, but yes. you know, a lot of people really like that. They really yeah. like that kind of. Um, yeah. And it does. It does have a. It does have a certain sweetness to it. So mm -hmm. there is wondering. a. There is like a honey, uh, uh, there's a honey note in there. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the final touches actually that we did because it was, so I kind of saw it, it's inspired, well, the name is after Sherrod, the film starring mm -hmm. Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this beautiful like 1960s whodunit comedy, rom-com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, I just kind of pictured like <clears throat> those two actors sitting in the garden, having a cup of tea, sitting on mm -hmm. like, leather armchairs even in yeah. like a tuberose garden and then the final touch was the honey and the tea because mm -hmm. it does have a tea note even though we don't list we don't list it mm -hmm. but it has this kind of black tea mm -hmm. essence to it and yeah. it wasn't one of his notes so i think that's the reason why it never got listed as a thing yeah. but to me it's like more like a candy if it makes sense it's very candy mm -hmm. tuberose uh Okay. With, with with leathery uh, facets, you know. So that's how I would describe it in a in short. Hmm. Really, really interesting. Really interesting. I have to wear this one more on the skin because I have not worn uh, charade on the skin. So that's where I can't say much. But another fragrance that really surprised me, Sarah, was lace. That one mm. completely blew me away because I was like, in the beginning, it was a lot of sugar, kind of like sugar crystals or vanilla. And then that coconut came and I was like, wow, you know, it was, it was the one that surprised me also because when you're smelling what you're smelling and then lace comes, which is completely unique mm -hmm. from the rest of the lineup, right? Like, and this is also, I haven't smelled anything from Sarah McCartney before. So this was the first time. You haven't? I have been living under a rock. Yeah. What? Oh, no. <laughs> no. So, really? I mean. Wow. She, she has been so requested on my channel, like, hey, bring Sarah on. So Sarah, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm more than happy to uh, bring you on. But this was the first time I tried her fragrances and lace um, definitely mm. um, surprised me. Yeah, well, you should definitely get her on if you can, because she is so knowledgeable. Yeah, you know? she's I've seen her videos on YouTube. Oh, I've yeah, I'm sure. Videos. I mean, she's, yeah. But she's one of the, you know, main educators in perfumery around here. Um, and I learned a lot from her as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lace is, <clears throat> so Lace came along and um, that was, it came along like right around the same time as Tartan. And they were also pre-existing things that Sarah had been working on that we kind of tinkered with and manipulated and um, lace is, it's uh, very sexy. It's got like a pretty strong jasmine musk, um, but it's also very easygoing. You mm -hmm. know, I find it to be of, of the collection. Like I think lace might be one of the easygoing ones. Some well, people don't Greek think keys, so. But. Greek key is also easygoing because of that cologne airiness, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, Great Keys mm -hmm. is definitely, definitely one, also one of the yeah. easygoing ones as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. <clears throat> so creamy. It's great, and I like the coconut in lace because it yeah. is so, just barely there. Like it isn't. Yes. It's not a coconut the fragrance, no, no. you know. <laughs> jasmine. But, jasmine is the, the 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 heart of it, and then there is the coconutty creaminess that that really mm -hmm. makes it irresistible, so to say, or it makes it mixed with vanilla. Uh, yeah very very sexy like you mentioned could be a really cool date night fragrance yeah very nice wow i mean there is there are so many fragrances Sarah, how many fragrances do you have like 15 16 14 14 14 okay but yeah. if someone is starting out uh with the brand or trying uh which i don't know three fragrances would you recommend so that they get a good idea of you know the brand and your vision so to say um, well, it's hard to say that because like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't recommend anybody blind buy and we don't yeah. sell our samples individually. I mean, you could get samples from like Lucky Scent, for instance, you could get them individually there. Okay. Um, but 
<clears throat> we are soon actually coming out with, um, my husband invented this cute little box that yeah. is, um, that is holds one. one. No, oh, this one. that's different. Oh, okay. This is the one that Yes, comes, that's the one that Ludo so, cool. so what's really cool about this is that um, it holds one, two, or three samples. So we're actually soon going to be releasing like a three, three sample sample sets, but they're going to be curated. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. you know, they're going to be pre-selected. So the first one we're coming out with is called the thrill of the chase. Each one of them is going to have like a theme and the okay. thrill of the chase is going to have, tell me if you think this sounds like a good selection. Mm -hmm. It's going to have Ludo, okay. Sherrod and yeah. Flame and Fortune. It's perfect. It's like a action, watching an action movie and thriller <laughs> movie and horror movie at the same time. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's perfect. I mean, I could not uh, do it better. I mean, you could put Jungle okay. Jezebel in there as well, actually. So yeah. it's this crazy ride, right? Amazing. Well, I think Jungle Jezebel is definitely worth trying. I mean, everybody's going to try that fragrance. Um, but no, I think I, th so we're going to do a few of these. This is the first of like several that we'll do mm -hmm. and they'll be available to purchase. And it will also be when people buy fragrances from our um, website, you get three free samples. So at the okay. moment they come in here and we select them randomly unless people um, offer, uh, ask specifically for, you know, three specific samples, which we don't invite people to do because it's not always easy for us. So often we mm -hmm. have to say no, but mm -hmm. sometimes we can accommodate people. So it's okay. always worth asking, right? But, yeah. um, but in the future, we're just gonna have like, you can choose which pre-packed, uh, three pack, you get free with okay. your with your cool. bottle. That would be amazing. Um, so are you, you are based in UK, right Sarah? So have yeah. you been having issues kind of working with Europe? Because oh, uh, yeah. I've got, yeah, <laughs> horrible, right? Yes, yes, definitely. We've all been having issues working with Europe. I mean, I think yeah. maybe some people who have like distributors set up already aren't having issues, but we yeah. don't really work with distributors. So, mm -hmm. Um, but we do have a fulfillment in Amps, uh, Antwerp, excuse me. In Antwerp, yeah. Yeah, right. so, um, so we're, we're working on stocking Antwerp, and mm -hmm. then um, when Europeans buy, they will be shipped directly from Antwerp, and that goes for, but we also have retailers. Mm -hmm. We have a, ret a new retailer in Italy, we have a retailer mm -hmm. in Barcelona, we have a mm -hmm. retailer in Hungary, we have a retailer in Estonia, um, so I think that's it for Europe. Krakow. Krakow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, sure. so, uh, so we have a few, and I think they probably ship. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I get the feeling like, you know, definitely Barcelona, for instance, has everything. Cherry Garden yeah. has everything in Budapest. They have everything. So um, if you wanted to buy one of our fragrances or even sample sets because i think that they have those too mm -hmm. you could um you could go on to those our retailers in europe mm -hmm. at which we are successfully able to restock right now so mm -hmm. they have they do have stock i mean <clears throat> some of them like for instance estonia they don't carry mm -hmm. all the range mm -hmm. and um in Poland, they have only the S. Baker collection. Okay. So, but yeah. soon they'll take the um, X rays. Amazing. That's great. Uh, so, first of all, thank you very much, Sarah. I mean, one hour passed by. We are past one hour. So, oh my God. Have, <laughs> it, it, it was nothing but, but amazing uh, to learn about the backstory. I just appreciate the fragrances much more. Uh, so, thank you very much for coming. And Thank you so much for having me, especially on your special 50th. I couldn't have thought of anyone. Anniversary. Better. Absolutely. It's really Sarah. fun. <laughs> and um, thank you for, I mean, I know I said the F-bomb a couple of times. Sorry about that. <laughs> thank good. you for I letting think... me be myself because that's, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's <laughs> what, uh, you know, I'm all about uh, genuine conversations where, you know, people who, who have the passion for fragrances can come and talk about uh, uh, about this and um, you know and now especially in these times when we can't travel I think fragrances give us this 
opportunity to travel. So that's amazing. But before we go, Asai, I would really love to give an opportunity for one of the read, uh, listener to win the sample set uh, from the brand. So you would have oh, to maybe uh, choose the winner. So okay. I would like to ask, who's, who is the perfumer of the newest fragrance, Ludo? So whoever answers first, Sarah will choose the name. And I'm going to ship, wherever you are, doesn't matter, all the sample sets uh, from the collection. So who is the perfumer of Ludo, the newest fragrance from the collection? If you were listening attentively, you would know it right away because you mentioned his name. Or you can <laughs> Google it real quick. Chris Morris. Oh, we have one. So it's right. Def. Daphne Akap. Daphne Akap, absolutely. So please send me a, a message, a DM uh, with your uh, address and I will make sure that I send them to you. So Sarah, thank you very much again. I really appreciate it. 50th uh, live was, uh, you know, was a highlight for me. So I thank can't you. wait what you come up with next and lots of love and best wishes from my thank side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Have a thank nice you. one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.